All right, hello, welcome back to the channel, guys. Um, we've just finished Resident Evil Village, so if you want to go check that out, you're more than welcome to. I'll leave a card up at the top. So today we're going to start with a new game called Steam World Quest: Hand of Giggler Mesh. Now I've wanted to play this for quite a while, and I was looking through my Steam library, and uh, the gods must be shining upon me because it was in there for some reason. I don't remember buying it. Um, it must have been one of those random purchases one day. So I guess we're going to play this today. So, um, like I say, it's this is a turn-based game, um, kind of similar to, I guess, uh, the early Final Fantasies. And you also have, um, I think it's kind of like card-based, turn-based, um, and it's it's kind of an RPG adventure. So if you're interested, stay tuned, and we'll uh, have a go. So I'm gonna um, delete this save here uh, that was pretty much just to uh, set up the game and the recording and we're gonna hit on there we'll go night uh, start somewhere in the middle and I guess we're we're playing this game get ready for bed son oh, dad tell me a story first please oh please oh, daddy you want to hear another tall tale from the high seas do you no not another pirate story I want to hear about Dragons and knights in shining armor. Dragons, you say? Well, then we have to go way back to the age of heroes. When our world was still young and innocent, the gods grew born and forged a heart of evil and placed it in the chest of a behemoth. A true hero was called upon, and by his hand, the corrupted heart of the monster was torn out and buried where it could do no harm. Over the years, his heroic deeds fell into obscurity. Instead, heroes of fortune spread across the land like a shadow. But there was still light to be found. Our story begins with two such lights. Two friends strolling through the forest in search of a mushroom. All right, you heard it here first. The gods are basically assholes. Cause big problems. Chapter one. They were fixed, and now we're looking for the mushrooms. And the alchemist. I guess that's just the way it goes sometimes. I mean, it's a nice starting point for a game. So, uh, also, don't forget, guys, to subscribe to the channel if you are enjoying the content and like the video. Leave a comment down below to start a conversation. I will try to answer every comment possible. And uh, hit that notification bell to be updated with new videos. So, we're going to see how this series goes. Um, so, this first video may or may not be uh, like a tester one, just to see how it's uh, received. So, let's see. Uh, Armily. As if sent on a mission by the ancient gods, our heroes cut their way through Green Fingers Grove. The smell of hazard and fungus hit them as they searched for the fabled Peppermint Puffer. Will you stop narrating everything? Oops, I'm sorry, Copernica. Chapter 3 in the Hero's Handbook clearly points out the importance of visualizing. Visualizing my foot. That fully illustrated book of yours is a pun-ridden cringe fest. Hey, don't diss the book. And by the way, when are we eating? He's a hungry boy. We should have taken Galio up on breakfast on that breakfast offer before we left. <sighs> he didn't invite us for breakfast. He said he'd rather eat the slowly gathering dust in his basement before joining our mushroom hunt. And this mushroom we're hunting is important enough for you to literally pull me out of bed? You can't do real alchemy from the comfort of a bed. A few of the professors at the college actually tried that. But the rest of them shriveled up over their research in musty, sun-forsaken labs. There was one professor, though, who really inspired me. She underlined the importance of actually going out into the world to deploy knowledge practically for the good of the many. Today's deployment is about finding the medicinal peppermint puffer. Not only is it an antihypertensive, 
HEPA toe protective and nethero protective, it can also. Hmm. You're setting me in the mood for a stew. We are not making stew. Look, let's just get going. I know you get restless, so why don't you take the lead for a while? Alright, I guess that's the um, the intro to the game. So, uh, we can use the arrow keys to walk around, or we can... I don't think you can see my cursor, but we can click. And uh, the character will pretty much walk to where we want to go. Uh, I think that's the extent of it right now. Uh, this is the options, or, or, or I guess inventory system. So, these are the two characters we have. Uh, we have status, so I guess this is just, yeah. I mean, if you've played RPGs, you, you've seen all this stuff before. Uh, we have a compendium, which is completely empty right now. And we also have a system. This is just uh, options and stuff. So let's carry on. Let's head this way, I guess. Um, I'm not sure whether I want to use the keys or the mouse. We'll, we'll see. Uh, interacting many objects in the world, such as the mushroom patch ahead, can be interacted with. Move near the mushrooms and use the controls shown below, or try clicking on them with the mouse to look at them. So we can click or hit enter to interact with them. So uh, let's walk over, enter. Uh, we have to be right above them. Enter. Hey, that was easy. Time enough to get these cooked up before the rooster crows. Unfortunately, these are common brushwood amnitas. We're after a peppermint puffer, remember? Sorry if my keyboard is clicking, if you can hear that. Dang. Also, they're poisonous, so don't eat them. Double dang. Okay, they're poisonous. What about this? We can hit this. Uh, nothing happened. Okay, we didn't get anything. Um, so yeah, this game, uh, I've wanted to play it. I, I really enjoy the other SteamWorld games. Um, so, and especially RPGs, I'm a big fan of those. Um, so once we actually get some exposition for this, we'll, we'll maybe be able to talk a bit more about it. But for now, I don't really know much or anything about the story or the way this game plays. Gah! More of those pompous posers from the village. Wait a minute. I knew the guild had some flimsy hangarounds, but you're practically rattling around in that bulky armour. Did you call me scrawny? Whoa, easy now. I didn't say... This armor fits perfectly. Here we go. Okay, so our first battle, we get some cards. Uh, no idea how we're going to do this. I'm going to use the mouse for this. Uh, I think, again, my mouse is turned off. You can't see it. Battles are fought using punch cards. Each turn, you'll drop to six cards. These cards represent abilities your heroes can use. So I guess we'll collect cards as we, as we go on. Uh, two or three. You can choose up to three cards to play each turn. The cards will be lined up at the top of the screen. When you're happy with the cards you've selected, press the finish turn button. Okay, if you prefer, you can also select cards and targets by clicking on them with your mouse or right clicking to cancel. A few alternate options for interacting with your cards will be available by hovering over them in your hand too. Okay, so let's check it out. So we've got uh, deals physical damage to one foe. One foe. Uh, we can uh, I for details. Let's check it out. Let's, let's hit I. Uh, so uh, strike deals 100% strength as physical damage to all heroes. Okay. And I guess we, yep. Uh, there's also some weird, uh, I don't know, like Morse code or binary type thing with some blacked out. I wonder if that comes in important or something. Uh, oh, we could also redraw these cards if we want, but I don't know if that takes up our turns. Uh, so down here we have, I guess, 10 cards in our deck. Uh, we have two cards possibly for the redraw. Uh, I guess we'll see. Uh, what else do we have? Uh, heals. Uh, so that's a healing card, bravado. Heals and raises strength. We have deals physical damage to one foe. It's a book bash. Uh, deals physical damage to one. And grants one ally a damage shield. I guess we'll, we'll start with, I guess, some strikes. So... Hero Strike, um, I guess we'll go for him, then I don't know how much damage this is going to do, so we'll do two on him, and then we will do this on this guy, so we can kind of get an idea of how it's going to work. So let's finish turn, let's see how this plays out. So our character, we're using the guy first, forgot the name, Amilo. Oh, okay, so depending on what card you use, depends on which character is used, okay. taking some hits we can't see their health uh, tutorial strikes upgrades and skills 
Your heroes can play three kinds of cards. Strike, Upgrade and Skill. Strike cards are just what they sound like. Basic, uncomplicated attacks that deal damage to your enemies. Upgrade cards empower your heroes temporarily in some way. As your heroes use strike or upgrade cards, they build up steam, pressure or SP. They can be spent to play powerful skill cards. So I guess that's kind of like an overdrive or, or limit. Um, so do we have an upgrade card? What is this? Fire damage. Fire. So we don't actually have an upgrade card right now anyway. Um, I guess we don't want to heal just yet. So let's... let's Hmm, let's check the flame out. This deals damage to all foes, so that is probably a good move. Let's go. One of those. Uh, need more steam. Oh, okay, so we need a certain amount of steam to play certain cards. So this, that takes three, but that one takes one. Hang on, can we take that? So that takes three steam. This one takes one steam. Ten times three, or twenty. This actually takes less steam. One. And actually does more damage, but it only damages one enemy. So if this is going to do 30 damage, that should kill that guy. And then we still have two to play. And these ones, it looks like they don't take any. So so I guess the balance of the game is to uh, try and build the steam up to get your, your more powerful cards. While balancing out regular attacks as well. So let's just go for a book bash and uh, let's go for a buster. Um, that should possibly finish them off. It says strength 37. Let's see. Let's see how this goes. Yep. So he's down. We're going to book bash. And then that was 37. So he's just about going to die. Nice. Okay. So that's fairly straightforward for now. So our melee is the guy... Copernicus is the girl. Okay, so we've got some experience. And some Trashium scrap. Seven gold. Alright, that's our first fight over. Easy as mushroom pie. Mmm, pie. We've clearly stepped into Coglin turf here. Let's just try and get out in one piece, okay? I wonder if our uh, SP carries on through fights. You think there's more of them? Awesome. It's like herding a small tornado. Alright, can we do anything with this here? No, it seems like we can't actually attack or do anything here unless there's anything interactable. We also have this map here. Can we see a map? Compendium? No. Ah, world map. Oh, that's not actually very helpful. Okay. Bestiary, we have the Coglin. Greedy selfish bots who spend their days terrorizing travelers, robbing the elderly, and generally making a nuisance of themselves. Cards. These are cards they can play, I guess. Alright, let's just continue. So I guess we're heading up here. Can we do anything with this? Nope. Let's check this chest out. Our heroes chanced upon a relic, a testament to the glorious battles of past, and some long forgotten treasure. Hmm, more likely coggling loot stolen from unwary travellers. The hero's handbook declares after beating up ruffians fair and square, the champion deserves a proper reward. I'll take it. As long as that robot in the back doesn't come to life. We got a repair vial, which I guess is a health potion. Recovery items can be used to heal your heroes or cure status conditions. They're a good way of dealing with challenges that you can't solve with cards alone. But supplies are limited. You can find recovery items in chests by defeating enemies or by buying them from merchants. Challenges you can't solve? Okay, we'll, we'll figure that out in time. Use recovery items outside of the combat by going to the items menu and selecting the recovery items. Your heroes are automatically revived and cured of negative status conditions at the end of each battle. So do so, so, the, so some items can't be used this way. Okay. Use recovery items in battle by going to the battle menu menu and selecting recovery items. Recovery items used this way count as playing card for the turn, so think carefully about the right time to use. Okay. Alright, how about this thing? Doesn't seem like we can interact, but we can, I think, destroy these. We need to go around. So, yeah, we can destroy these things. Oh, did we get something then? Can we items 
So recovery item repair, weapons, I guess these uh, accessories and materials, trashium. Uh, okay, I guess that's, that's good for now. Anything on this tree stump? No. Let's head down here then. Oh shoot, more of those pint-sized troublemakers. Yeah, let's get them, let's get them. Can we get like a preemptive strike on these? Let's ambush them. The Hero's Handbook describes just what to do in a situation like this. I understand there's a lot of talking in this uh, episode here. I guess we're just getting set up. So um, hopefully you guys can put up with this and then we can really get into some action, get some more weapons, loot, and maybe do some cool things. Um, there are two whole pages with diagrams on how to start the Coglin. And we sneak up behind them, strike first, and gain the upper hand. You must realize that regardless from which direction you come waving a sword at anyone, you will startle them. Whoa, so you say the method works on anybody? The book is great. Beware, foes will engage you if they see you gain an upper hand against them by pressing the indicated button when they are close enough to attempt a preemptive strike. This will cause your foes to begin the battle already wounded. Okay, so uh, click or enter is for the preemptive. Um, so, so we want to do that when his back's turned. Oh, okay, like that. That's cool. So, how much damage does it really do? Uh, sting pressure. Uh, each strike or upgrade card generates one SP. Your heroes have a shared pool of SP. Skill cards are very versatile and powerful, but if you don't have enough SP, you can't play them at all. Manage your pool of SP wisely, just like I said in the last battle. So, we don't have any to begin with, no. Uh, it took a nice bit of health off each of them, which is nice. So, we have no SP, so the only cards we can play are these anyway. So, I guess we're going to work on one guy at a time. Oh, and we get them instantly as well, as soon as we put them down to play. So, we can then do this so let's deal with that on him does it say how much SP we get for playing the card oh I think it's just one per card okay let's let's go for this yeah we've got SP and finish and attack so we should get a good 30 off here and is that gonna finish him off excellent one down double stab 510 I don't think we have to worry about these guys too much. It looks like they only play one card against us for now as well. Redrawing cards. You can redraw cards on your hand up to two times each turn. Redrawing a card means the selected card will be discarded and replaced by a new card from your deck. Discarded cards will eventually make their way back to your hand, so don't hesitate to use redraw often to get rid of unplayable cards. And remember, if you neither play nor redraw anything, your hand will not change. Okay, that's cool. So, we can either hold R or we can click here to redraw cards. Um, so, we've got one SP. Brave Buster, that does 37 damage. That's going to take two. So, we could play, I think, a strike card here. And then go with this. And that will probably, what is that? 11 damage, was it? Let me check. So, 11. So, we've got 37. So, I'll do 48 damage. So, we could play, yeah, we'll play that against him. We'll play the Brave Buster against him. That should be enough to kill him. But is there any reason to not play these cards for extra damage just in case? It seems like he's going to build up at SP if we play a card anyway, but I still don't know if it carries between battles. So we know we've got at least one. Let's finish the turn and see how this plays out. I mean, he's going to die. We know he's going to die. So goodbye, my friend. Oh, so we didn't play the card. We didn't get a chance to earn the SP. So we're still going to start at zero. And almost leveled up, baby! More trashium, more gold. Okay. I mean, seems fairly straightforward. Go across here, and let's break this open. So we get money here. There's going to be some kind of merchant or shop. Ah, so now we have a... Oh, hello. There's a sword there. Can we... Seems like we can't do anything here. So... We have a choice of up or down, but we, we can't open this map, so it's, uh, I guess, uh, I guess we'll go up first, and then, oh, maybe not, <laughs> maybe not yet, that's a big guy, uh, so we'll, we'll go down first. Look, Copernica, what is, I want, is for me? Even the Coglins have raised statues over Giglamesh, the true ancient hero. 
the majestic pose, the pride of a great dead oozing from every cut of the chisel. Ugh, those statues are literally everywhere, but they have good stuff inside by the looks of it. Of course they are. Giglamesh saved our kingdom from certain doom. He defeated a huge snarling behemoth, tore out its evil heart with his bare hands, and... And you can relive that very moment in your hero's colouring handbook. Oh, he has a colouring book. That's cute. <laughs> At least the Coglings know how to appreciate the heroes of the past. Unlikely. They seem to be more into piles of garbage and lumber held together by yarn. Hero statues. These are fully majestic homages to the ancient heroes. Serve as a good place to sit down for a while and get some rest. Approach the statue to save your progress. So they're safe points. Interact with it to restore your hero's health. However, be aware that this will also respawn all, near, all nearby enemies. Okay, I don't want to say it's like uh, Dark, Souls, Dark Souls mechanics. Because I very much doubt this is uh, close to a Dark Souls game. But, uh, I mean, it's, it's kind of similar. We'll save, they'll come back. But then we can, we can do some grinding too. So if we've just saved, maybe it's worth taking a crack at Sir Bigums over here. Let's, let's see if we even stand a chance. Let's... Turn around. Oh, no, get over here. Uh oh. Okay, we got him. Okay, so we're against this big brute. 130. Let's see if we can just use basic attacks. And we'll build up our SP. Um, we're okay for health, so let's play this card. And now we can play these. Um, I, guess, I guess we will, because I don't think we have any cards that take any more than... 2 to 3 SP right now, so 37, 37, they're both the same. So let's let's do this and, and see how that goes. It looks like there's some treasure back there for us too, so that's all good. Alright, hopefully he's not going to completely smash our health. Oh, that's fine. I was, I was thinking maybe he was going to be kind of boss level here, but uh, he's got a fox on his back. Oh, I don't know. So we can play... Uh, let's play our Heroic Strike, then the Fire Pillar. Um, grants one ally damage shield. Maybe we'll we'll see how the heal card works. Let's no 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 no. I wanted to. Oh, heal heals Armily and raises strength. Oh, okay, so this heals specifically Armily and not Copernica. And this one grants one ally damage shield, and we can choose for that as well. So, um, so let's let's give her a damage shield just to use the card because we have built up SP for that, so it's worth using it anyway. Even if we don't really need the shield right now, it will build the SP up. And I think that might be one more attack, and I think we're done. So overhead smash, and it looks like the shield here shows up as blue. Uh, some simple attacks here is probably going to be more than enough to finish this guy off. So let's just do this. Finish turn. And he is out of here. Goodbye, baby. Uh, looks like we're leveling up. So do we get... We've got plus five health. Smoldering ember, ten gold. Do we have some kind of... Um, I guess if we look at our book now, uh, our uh, status. So our health went up by five, so 85, uh, she went 65 to 70. I guess we just want to keep an eye on how high these are getting. Um, elements. Yeah, I mean, it's all, it's all fairly straightforward right now. There's nothing really too much going on. Let's see what's in the chest. A steel bracer. Okay, another oh my god, the tutorials are really, really coming through. You found an accessory item. Before it'll do you any good, you must first open up the pause menu and equip the accessory in the equipment menu. Select the character you wish to equip it and select the accessory slot to reveal a list of available items. Okay, let's uh, let's do that. So equipment. Um, so accessory. Steel bracer. So what what does it do? Hang on. So if we okay, nothing equipped. So 
some extra protective plating to take the edge off of enemy attacks. Health plus 20. You know what? I'm going to give that to Copernica because she has 70, whereas we have 85. So I think it will be better suited to give her some extra health. Uh, and I guess that's all we have. All right. Back we go then. Uh, was it down here? Yes. And down here. And then... Uh, yeah, why not? Let's do a quick save. It doesn't take too much time. It's it's nice and easy to do. So what do we got next? Uh, I guess we're just going to go this way. I think maybe... Can we use the WASD? We can. Cool. So maybe using a combination of walking around with the WASD and clicking um, to hit the enemies will be a bit more... A bit easier. Wait, can it be? Oh, looks like the peppermint puffer. It's even more majestic than I could imagine. Success smells like peppermint. It will be like eating breakfast, dessert, and brushing your teeth at the same time. All you need after that is some orange juice just to finish yourself off. We're not going to. You know what? Let's just grab it and get out of here. Uh, we got a boss that's going to appear, maybe. Just like the grinding gears of endless time, our heroes haunted to catch their breath. With their peppermint perfumed prize in hand, they readied their swords. Hands off! This peppermint puffer will clean out the mould from the funnel in the old well. We're helping the entire village. You need to dry it in one whole piece to extract all... Whoa, did you hear that? I can't help it. This sweet and crisp scent makes me hungrier by the second. I don't think that was your belly. Oh, hey there, mushroom dude. That's a nice hat you're wearing. Hold oh, on. Well, I know what you're going to say, but imagine how much stew we could... Uh, this is Gomphus. What a name. Eek! My mushrooms. Who dares steal Gomphus's beautiful mushrooms? Easy there, chief. We're just here to pick some of these. Unsuspecting, innocent mushrooms? Ravagers! I'm not a ravager. I'm an alchemist. Gomphus doesn't care. Gomphus will teach you not to plunder nature. Hell, it was only one... One got that mushroom. Sorry, my nose is super itchy. Oh, Tortoroi elements. Damage comes in five elements. Physical. Oh, I like this tune. This is this is uh, this is hitting the right spots. Physical fire, frost, storm, and arcane. A card's damage type is shown on the card. Some enemies have natural resistance or weaknesses to certain elements, and some cards can raise or lower elemental defense. Use the right element to maximize the damage you deal. So, what is that? So he has three steam points. So I guess fire would do well against this guy um, so if we can build up some SP which we can here uh, again I don't know how much I guess it's just one SP per card so we have to do that on our second uh, attack so eight okay so these are going to be the cards we want to play first because they are going to do some good damage let's do that where did all of my SP go oh yes we earn it as as they attack all right poison is poisoning us. Okay. Gonna get another tutorial on poisoning? Yes, of course we are. Conditions. Some cards inflict status conditions. These are negative effects that linger on the target for several turns. For example, poison makes the victim take damage at the end of each turn. Fortunately, most conditions go away on their own. After a few turns, you can review a list of conditions from the compendium menu. <gasps> oh, remember to breathe. Okay. So I don't think we can remove any. Uh, this is just a damage shield. Uh, this just heals, so I guess let's start with the flame wave. Hit you up, because that's going to do extra damage, I believe. I still i am not sure how to... Whoops, check your stats. Um, let's go with a, a heroic strike. And then, you know what, actually, let's... Let's change this around. If we go for the regular attack, the heroic strike... That's going to give us potential SP, which then gives us four. Um, oh, it's still not going to quite make it. Actually, we can do Book Bash. That gives us enough to play both these cards, but we can only play one of them. So, 
You know what? Let's bring them back. Let's let's do the flame first. Do that. Uh, let's do the sword attack. That's only going to give us one, so we can't play the buster. Um, I guess we'll just play whatever we can then. Uh, we don't need to heal. Let's just big bash. In turn. I guess that'll be enough. I don't think we're really in trouble in this fight, to be honest with you. Oh, the health. 610. So, we've got to watch out for... Oh, that's fine. That's fine. Oh, we're poisoned as well. Oh, that's gone down to half pretty quickly. If one of your heroes fall to zero health, the hero is scrapped. Scrapped? If all active heroes become scrapped, game over. I hope they don't disappear forever. Cards belonging to a scrapped hero become useless and waste space in your hand. Make sure to redraw those cards. I see. Scrapped heroes are repaired after each fight. Good, but health is otherwise not restored between fights. You can heal during battle using certain cards. That can be tricky. Visit a hero statue or use a recovery item to restore health outside of combat. That's fine. So we could... Uh... Let's heal Armley. I literally didn't realise Armley was a girl. It just said her strength. Okay. That's going to give us... Three, so then we can let's play yeah so we can play the fire and then we can also play the brave buster so we're going to heal and do two reasonably strong attacks I'll finish turn got to remember to finish the turn oh my god it only heals six that does not heal anywhere near enough oh man this, this could put us in trouble alright so, uh, Grants. Oh, no, I tell you what, let's give each of them a shield. And then let's, let's hit with, let's go for a, just a book bash. And then next turn, we might have enough SP to actually do some good damage with more cards we draw. We'll see. So they're both shielded. Hopefully that means we're going to take, well, is it less damage or the blue just counts as extra? Cool family. Oh, man. So if we got one that hits all three enemies, no, we don't have a AoE attack. Okay. Uh, so I guess let's play this against, we've got 11 health. That's really not worth it. Let's. Streamling, one regular attack. Eight, that's not going to quite do it. So let's go. Oh, I really don't want to use. Okay, let's go Brave Bash. And then let's do a Fire Pillar. These little guys, we're going to kill one. One's still going to be lingering around, but he's also going to take some good damage. We're shielded up. Let's go. Let's go. So the game is really about. I mean, well, any turn-based uh, RPG-type game is all about balancing. Um, so as long as we play the right cards, balance our health, balance our shields. Warcry, that's going to heighten their strength. Oh, they do hardly any damage, though. That's fine. I'm not even worried. We've got Flame Wave, though. That's that's all foes. So if we can get up to three, which I think we can do on our next turn. Let's go for Heroic Strike. Let's get this guy out of the way, I guess. That puts us at two. So if we play the Book Bash, we should get the Flame Wave. Yep, play the Flame Wave. End turn. And not that that really matters because that guy's going to be dead. Why did I do that? <laughs> it doesn't matter. I mean, I hope as the game goes on, we can collect new cards, more interesting cards and characters. Um, okay. Is it Amelie? What was the name of the guy? Gil? I forgot the name of the person. It was Armory. Okay. So, get low on health. Let's uh, let's do a bit of that. We have nothing to remove the poison with. Oh, actually, do we have anything to remove the poison with? We have a menu. I can't remember how to get into our menu. Uh, how how do we get into our menu to use the items? Ah, here we go. Okay. Uh, ah, detailed information. Health 6 and strength 23 magic. Okay, so we can check the defenses here. Active effects. We can go Q&E. Uh, and this is ours. Okay, that's cool. That's cool. Uh, 
Well, use recovery items. Okay, so there it is. You cannot retreat from this battle. Access system object. Okay. Recover items. So, you have two of these items. Repair vial. But this only does health. So, maybe it's not worth wasting this. No. At least I know how to get to them. That's that's pretty good. Uh, let's do a fire pillar. That's going to triple damage you. And let's finish off with a heroic strike. Let's see how that goes. Hopefully, he doesn't hit Armelie. And he goes for Copernica. Um, if not, it doesn't matter. I think we're we're definitely going to survive till the, the next couple of turns anyway. Just got to manage it nicely. The poison is really, really not helping us though. Uh, so we could raise the strength again. No. Uh, I guess we just attack with what we got then. Heroic strike. There we go. Book bash and book bash. So this is just going to be a random hit attack. But it's going to build up our SP. So the ne next cards we draw are probably going to be uh, reasonably good ones. And we can also redraw as well if we don't have very good cards. But only twice per battle. So if we can get... You know what? I'm going to... I am going to redraw here. Because uh, I want the flame attack that deals damage to all three. If we can get that to happen. So how do we do that? Oh, okay, we, have to, we can only redraw one card. Okay. Alright, let's redraw this one here. So we hold R. And we get the same card as what we've got. Okay, let's redraw this again. Damn. Didn't quite get what I wanted. That's fine. Let's just get these little guys out of the way. And then... Whoa. Probably, probably a good idea to heal Armley. Let's try this out. We should have really gone back and, and ground for some more XP, maybe. But then it would just make it too easy. What's the point of, of having a game that's too easy? This is enjoyable. Um, all in all, I know we're more or less. Whoa, we almost went then. We're more or less just just talking about the game while playing it, but I'm really enjoying this. This is a really enjoyable game, and uh, yeah, so far so good. Even though we're only on our third battle of all, I am really, really enjoying this. That does 44. What do you got left? 212. Fire pillar. Hit damage one foe. So we can play the fire pillar. We can play 44 to that. So if we use a recovery item, does that count as taking a turn? Okay. Okay, yeah. So that that counts as one of our one of our turns. That's fine because we're going to use the flame anyway. So let's hit you up with that, and let's give you a shield as well, just to make sure. Let's see how this goes. Nice, nice. We've got an achievement, potent, potable. Tons of SP. You're going to use warp wire again. Stop getting your health up. Okay, got another fire pillar, so yeah, let's hit you up with... Oh, actually, what else have we got? Let's do the buster first. Then we'll go with the fire pillar, and then we'll go with another buster. That is going to kick some ass. Let's see how that goes. glad we put that shield on because that's uh, yeah that's saved us a bit so the flame wave is all foe so I'm going to save that for when he calls the guys in again um, so it looks like maybe we just oh do I want to heal him let's be brave let's be brave let's just do a couple of strikes uh, yeah no we'll, we'll save that let's do this and hopefully um, hopefully we don't lose on our health against this guy. I think one more attack should do it. Cool family. That's good. That's fine because now he is about to get his ass mushroom murdered. So, Stu for today is a flame wave. That is pretty much going to finish you off. Uh, you know what? I think I might just end my turn here. Uh, can we do that? Tab. You can still play more cards. You know what? Uh, let's take a risk. Hopefully this will do it. Although there's no incentive to do that, really. Uh, I think the game really wants... Whoa! Achievements. We all go together. Grow locally. 
Yeah, I think the game incentivizes you to use all of your cards when you can, but we didn't need to, so I guess I guess we took a risk and it paid off. So another level, more HP. Uh, are we just getting HP for now? Because I really want to up that strength. Lustrous fiber, skull fragment with a pair of vial. Okay. Ha! Didn't even break a sweat. I'll be accepted into the guild in no time. I'll let you tag along to the forest and you turn into a frickin' fight club? Hey, you want to experience nature hands on, right? I say we stuff our bags full of mushroom and get back to the village. The things I do for learning. Nice. So I guess that was the tutorial complete. How long did that take? 40 minutes for a tutorial? Oh, that's fine. Well, chapter one, I guess. The knight and the alchemist. After a refreshing stroll in the forest, our unsuspecting companions make their way home to the village of Goose Bucket. What a name. All in good time for some healthy stew. And we, it looks like we missed some treasure somehow. Did we miss treasure? Maybe it was behind the mushroom and we have to come back to try and get it. Oh, I don't know. We'll, we'll see. Maybe there was a secret treasure somewhere. Chapter 2. The village of Goose Bucket. Goose Bucket. It's a good name. Not going to lie. <laughs> That's why I've told you a million times already. You should never stroke a duck against the wind. Huh? But it was so cute and fluffy. And a wagon? A fluffy wagon duck? What the fuck? <laughs> oh, a wagon. This has been the merchant, I guess. Wow, I've never seen a wagon like that before. I wonder whose it is. Was that here earlier? Wouldn't hurt to have a look, I suppose. Let's ch ch, -ch, -ch check it out. What are you dragging in that wagon? Hello? Hello? Anyone in there? Maybe they're out. Oh, what are you? Mysterious merchant. Hmm, a knight errand knocking on an old woman's wagon this early in the morning? Sorry to disturb, we were just curious. You're totally a wise old woman, right? Oh, do you hand out quests? Because I'm more than ready for. Haha, <laughs> no, I'm afraid I'm just a plain old travelling shopkeeper and the shop is not quite open yet, God damn it! Oh, we've been on a mission from the ancient gods and... We've been picking mushrooms. Excuse my friend, we didn't mean to bother you. Oh, not at all. In fact, what sort of a merchant would I if would I be if I let you leave without a small sample? Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. Oh, a tribute from a wise elder. Uh, shout cards lowers all foes strength by one grade for three turns. So yeah, that's looking cool. Creeping Cold deals 120% magic as frost damage to one foe and equal amount to another random foe. Deals 120% magic as frost damage? Okay, good enough. 14, 14 damage, frost damage. 120% magic as frost damage to one foe and an equal amount to another random foe. Okay, I guess, yeah. Just the thing for a pair of young go-getters such as yourselves, I should think. Farewell, and be sure to visit my shop in town later, once that ruckus is over with. Yeah, 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 yeah. What a nice old lady. Yes, what does she mean by ruckus, though? I don't know. Deck building. Okay, so now we can put our own deck together. You received a batch of brand new punch cards. How nice. To use them in battle, you need to pay a visit to the deck building screen and put them in your punch card deck. Try going into the pause menu using the controls shown below. Escape to open the pause menu. I guess we'll check it out real quick then. Uh, decks. De de decks. The deck building screen lets you edit your hero's punch card. Decks. To the left is a folder containing all your collected cards. Right now your collection is pretty meagre, but don't worry, you'll find many more punch cards on your adventure. On the right is the hero's deck of cards available in battle. You can add cards to the deck by selecting them in your card folder and remove cards from the deck by selecting them in the deck list. Each hero must have exactly eight cards in the deck. That's not very much. Keeping your deck up to date is key to being successful in battle. So be sure to check out this screen whenever you find a new card. Yeah, okay. So just um, 
keep updating this. That's that's what we've got to remember. So, um, so this is Armley's deck. Then we have Copernicus deck. Um, so we have two, three, and two. So three, four, five, six, seven. So there's eight cards there. Uh, four, five, six, seven, eight cards here. So we could take some of these out. Uh, how do we do so? We just click. I tell you what, let's completely take out cards of both and keep editing. Okay, so so we want we definitely want the heroic strikes. Let's put three of those in. Brave Buster. Let's put three of those in. That's six. Let's put a bravado in and let's put a shout in for good measure. That's eight of eight. And then go over to here. Let's take all these out and then start fresh. So we want, we definitely want the flame wave. But that takes up three. So let's hit up a creeping cold as well. So we have options. Uh, definitely need mm, three big bash to build up. Uh, magic barrier, that has been helpful. Three, four, five, so six. Uh, so let's grab one fire pillar. And... Mm, maybe another flame wave no 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 we have three we have four cards to build up SP three cards to use on SP um, it's it's awkward to begin with because it's hard to choose let's go for another flame pillar instead of flame wave because uh, that uses up less SP. That'll do. Okay. Uh, how do we... Can we go back? And does that save as so? Yes, it does. Okay. Let's go back then. So we've done our deck. Can we go back to the previous area? It doesn't seem like it. Uh, deck sign status. No, it doesn't seem like we can. But I wonder... Can we speak to you again? No. Oh, why is this lighting up? It's lighting up like we can do something here. If we hit enter. No. Hmm. Okay. I guess we'll just keep on going then. So that looked like it did save the game there as well. So can we destroy these? Oh, we can. Noise. Noise. Boxes to destroy. Okay, well, as the game has just saved, I guess we're gonna we're gonna stop off here because the time is getting up. I don't know how long you like these videos. Do let me know in the comments how long you would prefer these videos to be, whether you want them to be short or more bite-sized, or about this time, maybe a little bit longer. Um, any feedback I get uh, will help me cater these videos more towards any of you guys watching. So, uh, again, I know this video was more just getting into the game. A lot of tutorials. Hopefully, after this, things will speed up a little bit. We'll get into more battles. But we did manage one boss, at least. So, I'm pleased for that. So, I guess, as always, guys, if you did enjoy the video, don't forget to drop a like on the video. Um, again, throw a comment down below so we can start a conversation. Uh, you can subscribe to the channel to follow the channel and new things that are happening and hit the notification bell if you want to follow the series um, and our videos will be sent directly to your notification box. And as usual, I guess uh, this is the end of the video. So thank you for watching, guys, and I will certainly see you in the next video. Thanks for watching, guys. Bye.